In this video, I'm going to get you ready for your pre-release and first few drafts of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, the newest expansion from Magic the Gathering. We're going to cover the mechanics, the top commons in each color, a quick guide for each of the 10 two-color archetypes, and finally the combat tricks to look out for when you're playing your matches. Let's start with the mechanics. First up is Descend. This is a new keyword ability on a variety of cards used in one of two ways. First, some cards will have the word Descend followed by a number, meaning it gains a new ability or effect when that number of permanent cards is in your graveyard. For example, Kawadi Scavenger. It has Descend 4. So, if you have 4 or more permanent cards in your graveyard, when it enters the battlefield, you can return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Descend is also used in place of the phrase, if a permanent card was put into your graveyard from anywhere. For example, the Brood Rage Mycoid has the text at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, create a 1-1 Black Fungus creature token with, this creature can't block. In other words, if a permanent card entered your graveyard, whether by discard, mill, sacrifice, trading in combat, anything, you make a 1-1 on your end step. Do note that tokens dying don't trigger descend, only actual cards. Next up is discover. This means you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with mana value less than or equal to the discover value, in this case 4. Then you either put that card into your hand or cast it without paying its mana cost. Pretty straightforward. Next is craft. This is present on a bunch of artifacts in the set. To craft, you exile that artifact along with the required ingredients, and it transforms into a more powerful artifact. For example, Visage of Dread. When you cast it, you can force your opponent to discard an artifact or creature, but then in the late game, you can craft, exiling the Visage and two other creatures. These creatures can be either in play or in your graveyard, and it flips into the Dread Osseosaur. As long as you're happy playing the first half of these cards, cards with craft should be powerful late game mana sinks and especially good in grindy games of sealed. Finally, we have a returning mechanic from original Ixalan, Explore. When a creature explores, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, put it into your hand. If it's a non-land, put a plus one plus one counter on the exploring creature, then either put the card back on top of your library or into your graveyard. Note that this pairs nicely with the send to help you get permanent cards into your graveyard. There is also a new token type, Maps. At sorcery speed, you can pay one and sacrifice your map token and target creature explores this turn. Now that we know the mechanics, let's get into my picks for the top commons in each color, starting with white. In at number 3, Glorifier of Suffering. A 3 mana 3-2 is a fine failsafe, but if you can enable it, especially on curve, this presents a ton of power and toughness for only 3 mana. This should be a great top deck to help enable attacks, in exchange for sacrificing something you don't care about, or one of the incidental treasures, maps, or gnome tokens you're bound to have laying around. Number 2. Tinker's Tote. This card will serve as a glue piece for so many decks, creating 3 artifacts for 3 mana. There are a ton of effects that require you to sacrifice or tap other creatures or artifacts. You can use them to craft, go wide with them, or use them as a place to dump plus 1 plus 1 counters. You even have the out to sacrifice the tote itself to gain 3 life in a pinch and a more controlling deck, giving you time to activate your craft abilities or enabling descend by putting a permanent in your graveyard. And number 1, Oltec Cloud Guard. Cards like this are always some of the best commons and efficient rate creature that always does its thing and generates some extra material to use in interesting ways like I mentioned with Tinker's Tote. Let's move on to blue and number three, Relic's Roar. Normally, a card like this would just be good, not great, but a few things are different than usual. First, it's only one mana, when effects like this have traditionally been two mana. That is a massive difference, especially with recent limited formats being faster than ever. Second, there will be tons of trinket artifacts laying around, like maps, treasure, and some of the crafting artifacts you can animate on blocks to ambush attackers. My pick for number two, Inverted Iceberg, another archetype glue card that should be excellent in the more controlling blue decks. These decks want a 6 drop or 2 as a finisher, but they can be a liability if you draw them early, not this card. It's also a 2 mana cantrip, put something in our graveyard to perhaps enable descend, and leave some material to use if you need it. Then when you survive to the late game, craft it and start smashing. And number 1, Water Wind Scout. Just like the old tech Cloud Guard, a solid rate creature that generates some pretty much free extra material is always excellent, like Preening Champion or Falcon Abomination in previous sets. And maps are especially flexible, helping us smooth our draws or using them in all the other creative ways we can use artifacts in this set. Now on to black, and number 3, Fanatical Offering. This is usually a solid effect, but will be especially strong in the context of this set. 
There are a few enchantment-based removal effects in the set like Petrify and others that get completely owned by this. As we've seen, there are also tons of ways to generate incidental artifacts like 1-1 one -one gnomes, map tokens, and treasure that are great to sacrifice to the fanatical offering. Unfortunately, we can't trigger Descend with the tokens, but we can sacrifice artifacts and creature cards to trigger Descend, and we get left with a map token to use as we please. Number 2, Dead Weight. Solid, cheap removal spell that also triggers Descend when you kill something with it, since a permanent goes to our graveyard as well. This will be essential in every black deck. And number one, join the dead. Instant speed removal that kills almost everything in the set at face value, then with the send four enabled, kills everything except for a single creature in the set, Galta. This is an easy choice for the best black common. Let's move on to red. And number three, Sunfire Torch. Aggressive decks will love to have this, getting to equip for just one mana is great, and when that's not enough to enable attacks, just pitch it to remove their creature and trigger descend when it hits the graveyard. Number 2, Plundering Pirate. I'm sensing a trend here with the top commons, another solid creature that generates some extra material for us to use. Treasure can be used to ramp out big dinos, flash our bombs, or we can tap them and sacrifice them to other effects. Lots of options here. And the best red common is a braid. Cheap, flexible, instant speed removal that also hits artifacts in a set filled with them. Take these highly. Finally, green. And in at number 3, Cast Lem's Stone Tree. This card is our ramp and gives us a thing to spend our mana on. It's not as free as some of the other craft cards, but do a little bit of work to pick up a few caves, which you'll want anyway, and this will be fantastic. Number 2, Cavern Stomper. Green decks need a big finisher to spend their mana on, and this fits the bill. A 7-7 is absolutely huge and manages to dodge most removal in the set, especially since the common black removal spell is only minus 5 minus 5 if Descend isn't enabled. Instead of the usual bit of life gain we see on a card like this, we get Scry 2, helping us dig to gas in the late game. And number 1, Poison Dark Frog. It fixes and ramps you in the early game, plus you can cash it in on blocks later for a bigger threat, which is new for a card like this. And this gets a bit better in Sealed, where you'll want to splash as many of your bombs as you reasonably can. Very versatile little common that your green decks will love. Before we get into the archetypes, I'd like to make a quick honorable mention to the monocolor cave cards like Hidden Cataract. Having ways to get additional value from your lands makes a big difference, especially if the set ends up being on the slower side. I'm not sure how fast Ixalan will be, but Sealed tends to be pretty slow, so I'd consider them some of my most important commons when building my Sealed deck at pre-release. Now let's do a quick overview of the 10 two-color draft archetypes, starting with red-white tapping midrange, and it's signpost uncommon, Kaparakti Sunborn. It's a 4-mana 4-4. Four four. Whenever it attacks, you may tap two untapped artifacts or creatures you control if you do discover three. For once, red-white is not a straight-up aggro deck. Rather, you'll want to get artifacts into play with cards like Plundering Pirate or Oltec Cloud Guard. Then use them for value with cards like the Sunborn, or spend them to craft like with clay-fired bricks. Up next is Black-Green Fungal Descend, and it's signpost uncommon, Akawali the Seething Tower. It's a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with Descend 4. As long as there are 4 or more permanent cards in your graveyard, it gets plus 2, plus 2, and Trample. And as long as there are 8 or more permanent cards in your graveyard, it gets another plus 2, plus 2, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. Use Self Mill from the Death Cap Marionette, and Screaming Phantom to get permanence into your graveyard, and once you hit the key number of 4, you turn on your other stuff like the Baskin Capybara and Kawadi Scavenger. Next is Blue-Red Pirate Treasure with Captain Storm as the signpost uncommon. For Blue-Red, we get a 2-2 Human Pirate. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target pirate you control. This is an aggressive deck that gets better when you have artifacts in play. Create treasures and maps with Enterprising Scallywag and Waterwind Scout, which powers up other cards like Brazen Blademaster and Waylaying Pirates. Next up is White-Black Vampire Sacrifice, and it's signpost uncommon Bartolome. For White-Black, we get a 2-1 Vampire Knight, sacrifice another creature or artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on Bartolome. Use Mephitic Draft, create gnome tokens with Ultec Cloud Guard, and cast value creatures like Skullcap Snail that don't mind being sacrificed to other effects like Fanatical Offering or Glorifier of Suffering. Next is Blue-Black Descend Control, with Ukbenbach as its signpost uncommon. It's 3 Blue-Black for a 6-4 with Vigilance and Menace. Then if we have Descend 8, we can pay 4 Blue-Black to return it from our graveyard to the battlefield with a Finality Counter on it. If a creature with a Finality Counter on it would die, exile it instead. Slow down the game with cheap removal like Deadweight and Disruption like Visage of Dread, then fill your graveyard with Waterlogged Hulk and other Self Mill. Then take over the late game with powerful craft artifacts like Inverted Iceberg and other Descend payoffs. 
Next is red-green dinos, and its signpost on common, it's Quinth, firstborn of Gisha. For red-green, we get a 2-3 with haste. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay 2. When you do, target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. A classic dino-themed beatdown deck. Curve out with good rate creatures like Belligerent Yearling and Colossodactyl, then punch them through with tricks like Dreadmaw's Ire and Staggering Size. Next up is Blue-White Artifact Control and its signpost uncommon, Master's Guide Mural. For 3 white blue, we get an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 white and blue golem artifact creature token. Then we can craft it with another artifact for 7 mana, and it flips into an artifact that we can tap to create a 4-4 white and blue golem artifact creature token, only if this or another artifact enter the battlefield under our control this turn. Use cheap removal like Cosmium Blast and Dusk Rose Reliquary, plus good blockers like Market Gnome to delay the game, then take over in the late game with powerful craft effects. Next is Green White Buffs Aggro, with its signpost uncommon Kutzil Malamet Exemplar. For one Green White, we get a 3 3. Your opponents can't cast spells during your turn, and whenever one or more creatures you control, each with power greater than its base power, deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Curve out with cheap aggressive creatures like Iron Paw Aspirate and Malamet Brawler, and back them up with combat tricks like Staggering Size. And at the uncommon rarity, there are a few plus one plus one synergies like Explorer's Cache and Kinjali's Dawn Runner. Next is Red Black Descend Beatdown, and its signpost uncommon, Zoyoa Lava Tongue. For Red Black, we get a 2-2 with Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. It deals damage to each opponent who did it. We're looking for cards that can attack and trigger Descend at the same time, like Screaming Phantom and Volatile Wanderglyph, to help pump up our other cards like Child of the Volcano and Echo of Dusk. Finally is Blue-Green Explore Midrange and its signpost uncommon, Nikanzil Current Conductor. For Green-Blue, we get a 2-3. Whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature you control explores a non-land card, put a plus one plus one counter on Nikanzil. Look for creatures that explore, like River Herald Scout and River Herald Guide, then get extra value from your explore triggers with cards like Merfolk Cave Diver, and twists and turns. Exploring should also help you hit your land drops, so having a couple of big spells like Cavern Stomper should be nice in this deck. And finally, let's go over the common combat tricks you're going to see in your games. Knowing these spells can make or break games of limited, so let's make sure you know what to look out for. I'm going to show you a mana cost, then you have to guess what card your opponent could be representing. Some of these you've seen already in the video, so feel free to pause if you want to challenge yourself. Here we go. White. Acrobatic Leap. Target creature gets plus one plus three and gains flying until end of turn. Untap it. One and a white. Family reunion. Choose one. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn, or creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Blue. Relics roar. Until end of turn, target artifact or creature becomes a dinosaur artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-3 in addition to its other types. One and a red. Ancestor's aid. Target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains first strike until end of turn. Create a treasure token. One and a green. Staggering size. Target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains trample until end of turn. For a full list of all the instants in the set, I've provided a link to a scryfall page down in the description. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing for future draft strategy videos just like this one. I'll see you next time.